Psalm 7, a psalm of David, which he sang to the Lord because of the words of Cusi the Benjamite. O Lord my God, in thee have I trusted. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Lest at any time the enemy seize my soul as a lion, while there is none to ransom nor to save. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there is unrighteousness in my hands, if I have requited with evil those who requited me with good, may I then perish empty by means of my enemies. Let the enemy persecute my soul and take it, and let him trample my life on the ground, and lay my glory in the dust. Arise, O Lord, in thy wrath, be exalted in the utmost boundaries of my enemies. Awake, O Lord my God, according to the decree which thou didst command. And the congregation of the nations shall compass thee, and for this cause do thou return on high. The Lord shall judge the nations. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness, and according to my innocence that is in me. O let the wickedness of sinners come to an end, and then thou shalt direct the righteous, O God that searches the hearts and reigns. My help is righteous, coming from God, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge, and strong, and patient, not inflicting vengeance every day. If he will not repent, he will furbish his sword. He has bent his bow, and made it ready. And on it he has fitted the instruments of death. He has completed his arrows for the raging ones. Behold, he has travailed with unrighteousness. He has conceived trouble, and brought forth iniquity. He has opened a pit, and dug it up and he shall fall into the ditch which he has made. His troubles shall return on his own head, and his unrighteousness shall come down on his own crown. I will give thanks to the Lord according to his righteousness. I will sing to the name of the Lord Most High. A Psalm of David, which he sang to the Lord, on the words of Hushai the Benjamite. In flight from his nefarious son, the parricide, the blessed David found an ally in Hushai, who persuaded Absalom not to pursue his father immediately, contrary to the advice of Hathetophel, and instead to get all the people on the move and then to deploy them against his parent. Frustrated and extremely troubled, therefore, for the reason that the advice of Hushai was found preferable, Hithophel turned to suicide and met his end by hanging. The divine David, in any case, took the opportunity provided by the delay in attack to flee and gain salvation. This psalm, at any rate, kind of like a hymn or prayer, he offers to God his Savior and provides instruction as well, urging those wronged by anyone to have hope in God and await help from on high and, on the other hand, deterring those doing wrong by mention of the just judgment of God. O Lord my God, in you have I hoped. Save me from all my pursuers and rescue me. Do not snatch my soul like a lion, with no one to redeem me or save me. Trusting in no human help, he is saying, and instead holding fast by myself to hope in you alone, my prayer is to win your consideration. I am afraid that my adversaries will like a wild beast assail me and finding me bereft of your providence, utterly destroy me. O Lord my God, if I have done this, then he teaches in a clearer manner what he means, if there is wrong on my hands. And to show what kind of wrong he means here, he adds at once, if I have repaid evil for evil, let me then end up empty-handed before my foes. Let the foe then hunt down my soul and seize it, trample my life into the ground, and bury my glory in the dust. There are many species of virtue, not only temperance and prudence, but also fortitude and justice. So at this place he does not give evidence of the pinnacle of virtue in his own case, rather that although he scarcely wronged his enemies, he suffers unjust banishment on their account. Not only was I not the first to offend, he says, but at no stage did I presume to take vengeance on those who wronged me, though often having Saul in my power, I did not exact penalty for his unjust hostility. 
For this very reason, Lord, I beg you, in your clear understanding of the whole story, to give a fair judgment in my favor, and if ever I commit anything of the like, to deprive me of your care. He says, no, let me then end up empty-handed before my foes, and to subject me to those hostile to me, so as to deprive me not only of the glory and kingship you gave me, but even hand me over to a foolish death. This is what he meant after all in saying, Let him bury my glory in the dust. Rise up, O Lord, in your wrath, be exalted in the boundaries of my foes. While Symmachus read, in fury, and Theodosian, in anger, Aquila, at any rate, read by contrast, in haste. So he begs the just judge no longer to employ his long suffering, but his just verdict, and impose punishment on the wrongdoers. He used rise up instead of show no further long suffering. It is like rouse yourself, why do you sleep, Lord? And rise up, Lord, help us. It is time not for loving kindness, but for righteous anger. Accordingly, impose a boundary on my foes, curtailing their lawless forays. Arise, O Lord my God, and the command you gave. You gave orders for the wrong to be assisted, so that you bade be done for the others. O Lord, do now and give me a share in your turning the scales. An assembly of peoples will surround you. Over it return on high. Once this providence of yours has become clear, everyone will offer their hymns to you and will address you as God Most High in so far as you survey all things and for wrongdoers you make the punishment fit the crime. Return on high means be in my nature Most High yet unknown to many people. Show what you are through care for the wronged. Then, in inspired fashion, the Lord will judge peoples. He judges not only my case, but also that of the whole human race. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to the innocence within me. In these words, the divine David has not left a testimony to his own righteousness. We hear him protesting the opposite. Because I acknowledge my lawlessness and my sin is always before me, and I said, I shall declare my lawlessness against myself to the Lord. But he calls it justice in the matter before us. I committed no wrong, in fact, he is saying, against Absalom or, or Hithophel, or those arrayed in battle with them against me. So I beg to be judged in the light of this righteousness and innocence, and not in the light of the faults previously committed by me. I ask for a judgment on the current grounds and not for a payment of penalty at this time for other sins. Let the wickedness of sinners be brought to an end, and you will direct the righteous. For brought to an end, Symmachus put completed. If the wickedness of those addicted to vice is shown to be futile, the disciples of virtue will more zealously make its way their choice. God who tests hearts and entrails. Help for me is justified from the God who saves the right of heart. He uses the term entrails here for thoughts, since the entrails arouse the appetites of the abdomen, and from there our thoughts in turn give rise to desires. In figurative fashion he called the thoughts entrails. So the one who understands the hidden thoughts of people's minds, he is saying, will provide me with help that is called for, inasmuch as doing this is his custom. After all, he invariably avenges the wrong. From this point he proceeds to terrify those addicted to wickedness by giving a glimpse of the punishments due, and he foretells the fate of Hithophel. God is a righteous judge, strong and long-suffering, who does not give free rein to his wrath every day. Instead, he also shows loving-kindness, by which he bears people's faults for a longer time. For whenever he sees people not reaping profit from it, he gives them further opportunity with the addition of threats, putting the punishment off. But if they scorn the opportunity and persist in sinning, he immediately brings on their ruin in keeping with justice. What this involves he indicated through what follows. If they are not converted, he will wield his sword, he bent his bow, and had it at the ready. With it he prepared means of death. 
These are not words of punishment note, but a threat. He said, wield, not inflict, then his bow, not fired the arrows. And to teach us against whom he will fire the arrows, he immediately attached the words, he made his arrows into flaming shafts. That is, those taking combustible material sin, building with wood, hay, and stubble, as the divine apostle says, will be struck with those fiery arrows. Lo, he gave birth to iniquity. Hithophel, author of that wicked attitude, conceived distress and brought forth lawlessness. Leaving no extremity of wickedness untried, he armed a lawless son of the father, who had done him no wrong. He dug a pit, evacuated it, and fell into the depths he had made. His trouble will come back on his own head, and on his own crown will descend his wrongdoing. He will be caught in his own snares, he is saying, from his own efforts receive his just deserts, and be snared in the nets he laid for catching others. I shall confess to the Lord in keeping with his righteousness, and shall sing of his benevolence constantly, recounting the justice of his judgment. Please consider subscribing to this channel, click the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, and leave a comment. This will result in the YouTube algorithm spreading the scripture to a larger audience. Thank you.